I'm from a town called Yarm, which is in Stockton on Tees. And I was born there and lived in the same house. And then when I was 18, I moved to London to study fashion at University of Westminster. Yarm is a small high street um, of really chintzy and I guess like charity shops and more recently within the past five years they've um, opened a few chains there like Costa which is quite controversial for like the residents of Yarm but um, the area that I lived was a sort of housing estate um, just about five minutes walk away from the town centre. I feel like there was, um, well, the school that I went to, Conyers School, there was, um, I don't know, people really liked the lifestyle and they tend to, st tend to stick around. I mean, everyone went off to university or, um, I guess a few people moved to London, but um, I'm not actually in direct contact with that many people from my um, secondary school. But um, I, I've seen on Facebook quite a few people have gone back and sort of had families and, and mm. lives there because it's kind of, that is kind of what Yarm, it's like the perfect place to sort of settle and have a family, which is maybe why it wasn't um, so, something that I like aspired to do because I knew that I kind of wanted to go off and do fashion or something to do with fashion in London. I came to London when I was about 14 to um, model for something and um, really liked it. So I had this idea that I'd come here and study fashion. Um, so once I'd finished my GCSEs, I enrolled at Cleveland College of Art and Design to study fashion design there. And that was um, a two year course, um, which instead of doing a foundation, took me straight on to, to study fashion at university. I think some of the themes that I've explored in my collections, such as um, the nurse NHS themed spring summer 15 collection relates maybe slightly more to my life in the northeast that could be to do with the fact that my family is still there and I think it's a it's a sense like there's more of a, a sense of real life um there because things aren't so um things aren't so like aspirational it's not this constant need to do something for yourself which is a, a bigger part of day-to-day -day life like yeah. I think that London breeds creativity but also this sort of like selfishness as well mm. which is um which is kind of what you have to be like now to keep up with keep up with the industry and and even living in London in general I feel like th there was a definite sense of um community where you know you'd go down the high street and my mum would like no like actually everyone whether it be from the gym or like the hairdressers or she just seemed to know everyone there was a, a nightclub and sort of health spa in Yarm called Tall Trees well it it was like a complex originally it was a hotel which opened in the 60s and then it expanded into a health club like a gym a big swimming pool and then they built the largest nightclub in Europe on the side. I remember Princess Julie was telling me she DJ'd there before with Boy George and that it was quite a big thing at the time. But I guess because I was, well, when I started going, I went to an under, under 16s night. So I was about 12 and um, I guess we got the last sort of bits of it and it had already had its hair there. Yeah, it was, it was really sort of naughty, like your parents would sort of know what went on there. Um, so you'd have to convince them that you were old enough to start going to Club M and you'd, you'd go to Tammy Girl and buy a new outfit, especially the week before, and then meet up with your friends and stick loads of glitter and makeup on, and then just try and sneak past your family to try and get out. But yeah, there was no alcohol there. It was kind of like, um, it was like school, but um, everyone was like on heat, um, you like snog up to like 40 boys a night or something. <laughs> it was really fun. And the music was sort of um, like I'd be for club hit. Because it was a club and it was like an adult thing to do. It was just these like small people clubbing, which was, it made you feel really grown up. I think at that point when I was like, well, tw 12, 13, it was more important for me to feel like I fit in. 
sort of got a bit picked on at school and then by the time I'd got my braces off and I'd started going to this like mecca where you could snog loads of boys and I, I just my kind of aim was really sort of to fit in at that point I had that time approximately like 11 to 14 and like I realized that yeah like I'm not really like all these other kids at school so that's when I'd start like raiding my mum's wardrobe um, and wearing massive 80s earrings for school and converse trainers and like putting badges and ripping bits out of my tie um, and I'd get stuff confiscated from me all the time and that was really exciting because I felt really naughty I wasn't particularly like confident so like that gave me a that gave me some something which made me look a little bit more confident and and yeah made me feel slightly rebellious and I think that was probably the start of the um the way that I would maybe turn out I mean like around that point as well I was um customizing clothes for people like they'd bring their jeans into school and I'd give they'd pay me five pounds for me to like stencil and rip bits out of the jeans and I had like a little business going on I got entered into a modelling competition when I was 14 by a friend at school and that meant that I could travel to London with my mum and get photographed for it and um, I don't know I'd always seen myself as really awkward before and like maybe it's something that I wouldn't be good at because I didn't have enough confidence to do but I think that maybe sort of kick-started it a little bit and then after that um, when I was around 14, 15 I discovered music and um, punk and metal music and became really involved in that sort of scene in Middlesbrough and yeah I, think, I guess that's when I really found out a bit more who I, who I was and what I wanted to be about and yeah I enrolled at Cleveland College of Art when I was 16 and that was like the most amazing place in the world it was really really good well I sort of I had a boyfriend at the time who was in a band. He sort of introduced me to, I guess, like Nirvana and like stuff that I should have known already, but the people I knew at that time were exposed to that sort of thing. And my parents didn't particularly listen to music at that time either. Um, so I just discovered stuff that I'd always like, maybe should have known about at that point. And then it went pretty fast. And I was like going into record shops myself and picking up metal records and like, um, I guess like do my research on my own um, and then yeah when I met different people at the end of school that were also interested in that sort of thing so I suddenly decided that I wouldn't be like other people so I started dressing differently with my school uniform and then outside of school as well I remember coming in for non-uniform day and everyone was like what has happened to Claire she's a weirdo now <laughs> um, but that was really exciting. So I think that my style, my, my early like finding myself style was just to be a bit more like, I'm going to look a bit strange and scare everyone. And that was exciting. And it's kind of, maybe kind of stuck a bit. Like I still like to keep things a bit awkward every day mm -hmm. with something that doesn't quite match or quite go, feels a bit wrong. But, um, so yeah, I think that, and then one, once I was like going out and going to gigs, um, I would be going into charity shops around Yarm and Middlesbrough and Stockton and getting things and stitching them in tighter and adding stuff to them. And um, yeah, I mean, at Cleveland College of Art as well, um, everyone was definitely encouraged to have their own style. And um, we had some really amazing tutors there that were like, really kind of uni level standard they were really harsh on us like we come in with our early projects and they'd tell us to start them again because they weren't for good enough and I remember like half of the, the half of the year sort of quit immediately and then there was like the ones the hardcore ones that really sort of meant it um, and yeah in my class I had Eloise Parry um, who also exposed me to different types of music around that time as well. Um, I remember her coming to me with the Velvet Underground and saying, oh, you'd really like this. And I did. And then we were, we were like really into sort of Sonic Youth and 
experimental music at that point and we'd wear like white foundation and dye our hair black and wear really bright red lipstick we almost look like clowns but um, it was kind of like we'd do it together so and now we have a friend Lauren as well um, so yeah it was just like I, I guess like all the time that I was a teenager in the north I was just try going through a really like transitioning into different characters almost and then eventually finding out my my own identity I think that my interest in politics and um, punk began with music um, just hearing I, I guess like some of this the late 70s bands like crass like I was really into that when I was 16 and um, that sort of maybe kicked something off in me where I was like oh actually like things aren't really what they seem and I haven't been exposed enough to this sort of this side of the world and just discovering that sort of thing I mean it's quite cushy there I feel like it's quite comfortable and I'm not from like a poor background like we, we don't we didn't have a big house or like money to spend or anything but we wouldn't really you know I never knew much about like I never knew anything about politics basically and um, yeah I think it, even in any art college it's kind of their responsibility as well to, to make sure that you know when you're creating art that you there's a context to it and I think that that maybe started there as well a little bit um, with the tutors and the work that I was producing. Yarn Fair is a fair that comes once a year and it's got all the same rides as every other fair in the UK. But I, it's just special to me because it was a time where, similar to Club to Tall Trees, where you could feel like more of an adult, like you'd be allowed out on your own and your parents would give you a bit of pocket money so you could spend it on some rides. You'd always go down and meet some boys there and you'd start till like maybe 10 o'clock. Um, but yeah, I can remember like being sick on some of the rides and every year there's sort of something that happens and um, it was just it was just really nice like it's a nice memory from when I was younger and it'll never I'll never be able to relive it because I'm not young anymore it's not something that I could go to now and get a group of friends together and it'd be the same because mm. it, it would it's just like a nice memory that's gone and I'll never sort of get back which is sad <laughs> but it's, it's true like you get older and it's not the same. It was there and it was gone and it was transformed for a night into these like bright lights and um, really it's kind of just, it's not, it's just you spending money on rides, <laughs> like really high priced rides but there's something exciting about it and then if, if you want to go on like the scariest one, you'll like think about it for a while and then you're like, I'm going to go on this one this year <laughs> and then come off and be sick. So while we were at um, art school, me and Eloise would um, do photo shoots, um, fashion shoots in the fields around my house and, um, and set up our own little mini projects. Um, we'd usually drive her little car around or um, get our parents to drop us off at certain locations and use our friends to model. Almost like looking through fashion magazines at the time as well and being like, our oh, stuff's just as good as that. Like, we can do this. Like, there's no reason why not. And yeah, we both moved at the same time. She went to Ravensbourne and I went to Westminster. We still do the same things. Like, it's always people we know or we've seen somewhere that we really want to photograph. And she'll usually have an idea of somewhere she's seen before that she wants to photograph in. And, um, yeah, we just work in exactly the same way, which is great because it's nearly been about 10 years since mm. it started. I don't know if my aesthetic comes from the northeast. I think it might be just me that's kind of like, this is what I want to do. I don't reference things to do with the northeast that much. Um, I've lived like my adult life in London now. So since I've been 18, I've discovered everything for myself. You know, like my, I haven't got my family here, so. My discoveries are all my own and through my friends and my family I've created here. It's easy to sort of forget that sort of side of it because you are just always just working on the next thing and the next thing and the next thing in fashion and um, yeah, you just sort of forget. It's, it's really sad, but I mean, I couldn't go back there. There wouldn't be much for me there now. It's not like I could suddenly start making my clothes 
and um, you know operating from the northeast it just wouldn't really suit I personally like really enjoy the people I know here and like me here and I kind of fit in more here unfortunately I think if you're from London as well um, you've already had everything sort of there ready for you to take and northerners tend to like use materials or resources in the best way they can and like you know once it's once it's easy for you to get things and that everything just becomes a bit easier but interesting works often that you had a struggle to get to that stage and you just take a few step back steps back and then look over it again and you have that sort of you need to find more and more and more about what it is you want to do so yeah i mean i think that it's it has changed my work that I, like it has made me that i'm from there like i hope that that doesn't go i don't want to be I never want to be lazy with my work and I hope that doesn't go. That's something I'm always going to try and do. I take every opportunity as um, a really big deal and I always try and put my heart into it. So I think that's probably, um, well, I think that's actually definitely because of my upbringing.